KLM, recognized as the world's longest operating airline and a member of the Air France KLM Group, has announced intentions to modernize its wide-body aircraft fleet. When it came to this announcement, many thought that the airline would opt the Boeing Dreamliner 787 because it has traditionally operated a Boeing-dominated fleet since 1969 when it received its first Boeing, which was a 747. But no, their decision turned out to be all about Airbus A350. So what's behind this decision? Why is it shocking? And is there any other chance for Boeing? We'll find out in this episode. Range in a recent interview with Bloomberg, Air France KLM CEO Ben Smith explained that preference for the Airbus A350 over the Boeing 787-10s is due to its superior range. The A350-1000 boasts a range of 8,700 nautical miles, while the A350-900's range is close behind at 8,300 nautical miles. In contrast, the 787-10's range is much shorter with 6,430 nautical miles. So with plans to expand in South America and South Africa, the A350's additional range is a strategic advantage, especially given the current restrictions on European carriers flying over Russian airspace due to the conflict in Ukraine, the range is crucial for Air France KLM. With Russia's airspace closure to European airlines, including KLM, direct flights between Europe and Asia have become complicated. These restrictions necessitate detours that add significant distance to flights. For example, a flight from London to Tokyo now takes about 13 hours and 44 minutes, nearly two hours longer than before, due to a detour of almost 1,800 miles to avoid Russian airspace. Normally, the direct distance from Amsterdam to Tokyo is roughly 5,000 nautical miles, a distance comfortably within the 787-10's range. However, with the detours necessitated by the airspace closure, along with the consideration of adverse weather and wind conditions, the 787-10's range is pushed to its limits. Given the likelihood that these airspace restrictions will continue, it makes strategic sense for KLM to opt for the Airbus A350, which boasts a longer range capable of handling routes to the Far East under any circumstances. Cost efficiency is another significant factor in Air France KLM's decision-making. The A350s are reportedly more affordable than the 787s, with a list price of about 317 million US dollars each, saving roughly $20 million per aircraft compared to the Boeing 787s. When considering the 50 A350s on order, this could mean a potential saving of approximately $1 billion for Air France KLM. The savings could reach nearly $2 billion if the option for an additional 40 aircraft is exercised. But it's important to note that aircraft list prices are often subject to negotiation, so the actual savings may vary from these estimates. There's speculation that Airbus may have offered competitive pricing to secure the deal with Air France KLM. The savings are not solely from the lower price of the aircraft, but also from another factor, which is the maintenance process. Airbus has aimed for a 10% reduction in direct maintenance costs for the A350 compared to its Boeing counterpart. The airframe of the A350, composed of 53% carbon fiber reinforced plastic and 14% titanium, demands less maintenance. Additionally, the A350's systems are designed to be less complex, leading to fewer maintenance tasks. Airbus's optimized maintenance program for the A350 further enhances its cost efficiency. Moreover, the reliability of the A350's engines contributes to reduced repair frequency and cost. Collectively, these factors can lead to a maintenance cost saving of up to 25% over 15 years for the A350, making it an economically attractive choice for airlines prioritizing long-term operational savings. Additionally, the availability of the A350s has been a decisive factor. Airbus had a shorter backlog for the A350 compared to Boeing's 787 at the time of the agreement, and Airbus is also producing A350s at a higher rate than Boeing's 787s. Consequently, KLM is positioned to receive the Airbus aircraft more swiftly, with the first delivery slated for 2026. Even if Boeing had a smaller or equivalent backlog, there was no certainty of prompt delivery for the Dreamliners. Boeing has encountered significant challenges in manufacturing 787s, including various quality control issues that once halted production entirely. Despite efforts to resolve these problems, in June last year, Boeing identified another production defect, causing further delays for about 100 Dreamliners. The problem was identified in the horizontal stabilizers fittings, which are part of the tail section of the planes. 
Hence, this flaw, described as a non-conforming condition, has necessitated inspections and potential repairs, impacting near-term deliveries. So, with Air France KLM aiming to deploy their new aircraft by 2026, opting for the 787-10s would pose a significant risk. At first glance, KLM appears to be contradicting its previous stance, but there are compelling reasons behind Air France KLM's choice. To understand this decision, one must consider KLM's history. Established in 1919, KLM, formerly known as KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, is the Netherlands flag carrier, headquartered in Amsterdam with its main hub at Amsterdam Airport Schiphol. With over 35,000 employees and more than 100 aircraft, KLM is the oldest airline that is still in operation. After years of success, KLM agreed to merge with Air France on September 30, 2003, forming the Air France KLM Holding Company. This merger created the world's largest airline group at the time. But in contrast to other notable airline mergers such as United Continental and Delta Northwest, Air France and KLM have maintained distinct brand identities. They operate under a shared board of directors responsible for strategic and financial oversight, yet their operational elements, including staff and flight paths, are kept separate. This separation extends to their aircraft fleets, which are markedly different. Air France predominantly operates Airbus planes, while KLM has a preference for Boeing aircraft. They also maintain operating their own hubs. Presently, the group possesses 552 aircraft and serves over 300 global destinations, ranking as Europe's fourth largest airline by passenger numbers after Lufthansa, Ryanair, and International Airlines Group. Here's the situation. KLM has traditionally operated a Boeing-dominated fleet with a mere 11 Airbus planes, including two variants 200 and 300 of the A330 family. On the other hand, Air France is current operating 218 aircraft with only 73 Boeings, accounting for approximately only 33% of the fleet. You see, considering the separate backgrounds and different fleet configurations of the two members, when Air France KLM Group prepared to update their aircraft, the industry anticipated that each airline would follow its usual pattern. Air France acquiring Airbus planes and KLM opting for Boeing. Initial speculations even pointed towards Air France choosing the A350 and KLM selecting the 787-10. This is because when an airline becomes deeply integrated with a specific aircraft manufacturer, such as Boeing or Airbus, it's rare for them to switch allegiance. The advantages of this loyalty include uniformity in the fleet, streamlined maintenance, and the ability to influence the design of future models. Moreover, in 2019, CEO Ben Smith even declared that KLM's long-haul operations would rely solely on Boeing 777s and 787s. Thus, it was quite unexpected when Air France KLM unveiled a plan to replace their Boeing 777-200ERs and Airbus A330s with an order of 50 Airbus A350s, with the possibility of adding another 40 instead of the Boeing 787-10s. And this acquisition plan is not only for Air France but for both members. More Interestingly, with a total 90 order and current 29 A350s operated by Air France, the Air France KLM Group would surpass Singapore Airlines, which is operating 63 A350s, to become the largest operator of this aircraft. So what about Boeing? The switch to Airbus is a considerable setback for Boeing, potentially costing them billions. Yet. Boeing may still find an opportunity with Air France KLM. Reports indicate that the airline group had four aircraft models under consideration for fleet renewal, including the A350-900, A350-1000, Boeing 787-10, and Boeing 777X, specifically the 777-9 variant. Although the 787-10 now seems an unlikely choice, despite KLM's current ownership of 10 such aircraft, the 777-9 remains a potential future addition to their fleet. This is partly because KLM previously operated a substantial fleet of 747-400s, which have since been retired, leaving a gap in capacity that the 777-9 could fill, given its approximately 425-seat capacity, making it a suitable replacement for the 747s. The importance of such capacity becomes clear when considering KLM's central operations in Amsterdam. The Dutch government's environmental policies may soon require Air France KLM to consider the 777-9 for their fleet. 
The Netherlands is looking to reduce its carbon footprint by limiting the number of flights at major airports, potentially reducing annual flight movements from nearly 500,000 to 460,000. Despite opposition from the aviation sector, these environmental regulations could be enacted, which would make larger aircraft like the 777-9 more valuable for maintaining passenger numbers while adhering to new flight movement limits. This aligns with a broader European push towards sustainable aviation, where carriers with larger, eco-friendlier, and quieter aircraft could benefit by transporting the same number of passengers on fewer flights, thus reducing flight frequency. In this context, the 777-9 emerges as a potentially ideal aircraft, offering both high capacity and environmental efficiency. While the 777-X was initially considered, its pending certification means it won't be available within KLM's desired timeframe, leading to their preference for the A350s. However, with the anticipated certification of the 777-X in 2025, it's likely that Air France KLM will consider this high-capacity jet for future fleet expansion. Besides, to determine if KLM requires the Boeing 777-9, it's essential to examine the distribution of their Airbus A350 orders. If the majority of the orders are for the smaller A350-900 variant, it could indicate that KLM is considering additional purchases of the larger capacity Boeing 777-9 in the future. Conversely, if the order is predominantly for the larger A350-1000, then it's likely that KLM's proportion of orders from Boeing will diminish. Therefore, it remains to be seen if Boeing will have another opportunity to secure a spot in KLM's updated fleet.